earlier, we discussed the fact that consumer sentiment hasn't quite caught up with some of the encouraging economic signals. Uh, and this is particularly true in the United States. And so according to our Consumer Outlook survey, which I, I found really fascinating, so 43% of U.S. consumers said they were worse off financially than they were a year ago. And that's higher than the global average, which was 32%. And then in addition to this, the survey showed that U.S. consumers' concerns over their ability to just provide basic needs for their family, that rose 6% from January to July, whereas globally, that concern just made sort of, that, that concern remained neutral. Um, so both of you shared earlier, again, like psychologically, there's just still shockwaves from high prices. There's gonna, it's going to take some time for people to catch up. But Ernie, I'm curious, do presidential elections, rhetoric around the campaign, um, what role does that play, if any at all, in um, what we're seeing in consumer sentiment or even spending? We'd love for you to unpack. Sure. Um, when it comes to spending, it looks like nothing. Now, we have had a couple of elections that have taken place in recessionary years, 1980, 2008, and of course, 2020, which took place during the pandemic. And so I think of those as, you know, special cases, and I'm, you know, putting those aside. But all the other presidential election years, um, consumer spending grew before the election and consumer spending grew after the election at roughly the same place that it pace that it did before the election there didn't seem to be much of a change in pace in consumer spending after the election versus before the election so um you know consumers didn't really seem to react either way one way or the other um which is i think good news um to hear when it comes to consumer sentiment um it's it's a little bit more subtle. We we do know that political polarization affects consumer sentiment. That's not the only thing going on right now. Even considering political polarization, consumer sentiment is low right now from where we would expect it to be, given other economic metrics. You know, given where the unemployment rate is, given even where inflation is, um, consumer sentiment is still lower than we would we would expect it to be. There are a lot of hypotheses for that. The likeliest hypothesis is that consumers just have long memories when it comes to inflation. Um, or you put another way, you know, you're going back to what Lauren said, you know, consumers don't like high prices as well as inflation, you know, the change in prices, and they're not yet used to or acclimatized to the high prices that they're seeing. And so consumer sentiment is remaining low. The good news for manufacturers and retailers is that consumers are not spending like they have low sentiment. Um, retail spending um, adjusted for inflation is quite strong right now. Um, as a matter of fact, consumers are spending as if their sentiment were you know, 20 to 25 points higher than it actually is. What that means, though, is that there's really not much upside on the, you know, on the other side of the election if sentiment gets any better, right? So, you know, uh, if, 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 if firms are waiting around for consumers to get more optimistic and they're saying, oh, you know, like, I hope that the election passes and consumers start getting, you know, a little bit happier about the way things are going. Well, the evidence is that consumers are already spending as if they're happier. So if they get happier in 12 months time, uh, it's probably not going to have much of an effect on their spending, it looks like. Goodness. Lauren, what do you, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I think, you know, my mind jumped to, you know, a dynamic that we've been talking about a little bit this year throughout some of our other reports. And that's, you know, something we've coined the say do gap of consumer behavior. I think it's really applicable here, you know, when consumers say one thing, yet in their actions and their spending and their behaviors, we're seeing something else. And I think so many factors, both conscious and non-conscious, are really kind of playing into consumer decisioning right now. So, you know, election or not, you know, businesses really do need to rely on, you know, reliable, trustworthy data sources that help to kind of mitigate and close some of those gaps between the say and the do, because really, um, otherwise it can be a really tricky um, landscape to navigate. 
Absolutely. Uh, you know, um, and, and that's fascinating. I think, I think that's also encouraging. You know, when I saw those numbers, I got a little disheartened, uh, Ernie, but, but, but maybe you, you, you changed my mind there uh, today. It's always important to, to Lauren's point too, to look at those numbers, look at what the, the data is actually telling us and to, to close that gap to better be able to, to anticipate and predict what's next. So thank you both. Um, and thanks for indulging me on a, an election question. Uh, Ernie, we're excited about your, your article that's coming out.